Welcome back to West Wing Studios. It's uh, almost the end of May, uh, 2011. This song, uh, Gemini 16, was wrote uh, last year, June of 2010. Uh, the drums were recorded in August um, of 2010, and then I mixed it all the way up till probably December of last year. So it's been done almost six months, um, but I haven't released any of the CD, actually. Even on the online videos that you see, you're hearing, you know, preliminary tracks, uh, pre-production tracks. You haven't actually heard a final song. Um, and today I'm going to shoot a video f with the final track so you actually hear the exact uh, track because it's going to be on the CD. Um, you know, maybe a little bit of tweaks with the mix, but uh, for the most part it's going to be the same thing. But while I was doing that, I thought I'd do a little tour of uh, West Wing Studios since I haven't done one. Um, I've got a pretty, you know, humble setup here. A lot of people have this similar setup that I have. Um, I use Pro Tools 7.3 on my live uh, recording uh, rig, and I mix some on this. I'm going to be mixing on Pro Tools 9 shortly. But just to give you a rundown of what I've got here and how I do my thing with uh, the home studio, um, I've got a uh, snake that's running through the wall here, which me and my dad put together. We ran the uh, cables from one room in the back to this room. So the back room I record uh, all my live instruments in, but then I use this as my control room. And most studios have two rooms. They have a, a room where you mix and it's set up for listening. And then you have a room that's set up for uh, cutting instruments, which could be a little more live. And that's kind of the way most studios are set up. But in a, in a home studio, it's kind of hard to get that exact perfect room. Uh, although my room is, uh, as you can see, treated with, uh, um, with fiberglass treatments all the way around. I actually have the entire room treated. So it, it's a very, uh, it's not super dead, but it's it's pretty dead, and it, it allows me to get pretty accurate mixes um, in this room because what you want to do is take out the, the reflections of the walls and create as uh, neutral a uh, sound listening environment as possible. So that's what I've done in here. And then um, how this works basically is all those instruments come in from the back on these snake cables into these interfaces. And for those of you who are not familiar with what that you know does or how that works, these units basically take the analog uh, mic signals or instrument signals and turn them into digital signals. So this is a very important part of the chain where uh, quality is a premium and you want the best possible uh, conversion from analog to digital as possible. Now this is where home studio is really short uh, and compared to a uh, higher-end studio. Usually high-end studios have much better versions of these boxes, but what these boxes do Mine, in particular, allow me to do uh, up to 16 inputs of different instruments so I can record an entire band through both these inputs at the same time. Each one does eight channels. Uh, the top one is primarily uh, an ADAT, which means it connects to the bottom box and allows another eight channels to come, ADAT expansion box, they call it. Um, and it's just a connector that they're talking about that allows you to do that. And the bottom unit is the 003 DigiDesign. Pro Tools uh, interface, and um, and it's pretty much a standard in the lower end studios like a home studio, project studio, they call them. Um, I use some pretty okay KRK ST6 passive monitors, which is not great. I have a little uh, a little banger mixer. I just run to my power amp for my passive setup, so I can monitor with uh, those speakers. Uh, I use a Mac, an older now it's an older Mac, an iMac, uh, 2.4 gigahertz dual processor, Intel processor was one of the, I think this was the first version of that that came out. And uh, my workstation keyboard is a Motif 8 ES, which is uh, was pretty much the standard of uh, pretty much all the live keyboard guys out there for a long time. Um, I'm not good enough keyboard player to uh, <laughs> ever claim that I should be playing one of these, but I was lucky enough to get one. Uh, back in the day. It's been probably five years now that I've had it, maybe six. And then my hard drives for all of that is back here. I have external hard drives that I use for one for backup and one for tracking uh, on my Pro Tools rig. And the internal drives in that are pretty much for operating system only and for the software. Um, I have a video uh, 
DVD video TV over here that I used to uh, learn new tricks and stuff off of videos that uh, training videos and kind of stuff like that. It helps out just to have it close to my workstation. I have another little workstation set up for um, my old G4 uh, that I used to do Pro Tools on and I can still back, go back and listen to that. The first interface for audio and digital for the Pro Tools set up for, well, not the first one, but one of the first ones they really came out that was semi-pro was the 001, which I still have and still works great, actually. Uh, people always talk about how great Macs are and it's really, uh, you know, they're just so solid and stable that I, after all these years, my Mac G4 uh, still works great. And that's a 450 megahertz Mac. It's awful, but but uh, anyway. And then I did have the original inbox as well, which is no longer being used here. And I've got a set of cheaper uh, M-Audio 5-inch monitors that I use for, for, like, laptop stuff when I'm just playing around on the Internet or whatever. Got a little microcube amp in here that I practice with and uh, my old Marshall uh, MicroStack from back in the 80s. I still have that. I don't know if it works really, but and I have a lead 12 back there behind that base. So that's kind of my, my mix room, and then back in the back I have the live room, and I'm set up for the video that I'm shooting today for Gemini 16. Um, but back here we have drums and some uh, acoustic treatments that I just added, which I'm really excited about. I just put these acoustic treatments in. And um, I've got my guitar rig in here and a drum set and everything we need to practice and we usually bring a board back here and, and rehearse as well. So it's a cool little live room. It's, it's got a little bit of ambience but now I've got some treatments so I can change the ambience to whatever I want uh, for whatever I'm doing tracking wise. Uh, my guitar rig is right here. Uh, I use a Pod X3 Pro which is a modeling preamp which allows me to emulate different amplifiers so instead of having a bunch of different amplifiers on stage I have one box that emulates them all and at the same time it gives me effects so I have delay uh, chorusing all that stuff built into one unit and then it's controlled by this foot pedal the FBV shortboard allows me to do channel switching which means switching between different amps and also to turn the effects on and off it allows me to do volume and wah pedal control here and then it uses a simple cat5 cable that runs back to the back of the rack and does all that switching so there's one cable that's it one cable that comes out of my rack to my floor pedal and that's it most people have guitar uh, pedals and pedals are just crazy because each one of them has a cable going between them and you could have up to 10 12 cables going on uh, on that foot pedal and if any one of those fails you can't even get your amp to work so I opted not to go that direction go more modern and uh, use this setup. Now I run this pod out into a Marshall Class 5, which is kind of a new amp, new amp that's come out. It's a EL84 10-inch combo um, that is just Class A. So basically it's like a uh, old Plexi sound when you run it just by itself. But I run the pod in front of it and so I can get just about any kind of sound out of it too. So it's kind of crazy, but it sounds great. And um, I've been using this for probably six, eight months and really, or maybe even longer, I really like it. It's in a really cool uh, British racing green with a tweed front color, which is really awesome. I love when I get the colored marshals because they're really collectible and cool. Um, and then in my rack, you see I have an X2 wireless, which is one of the first digital wirelesses that ever came out that I really love. It really retains the signal quality and the sound of your guitar. And then above that, I have a uh, G3 uh, inner monitor wireless that I use for all my headphone monitoring on stage. I have an old tuner, a rack tuner from uh, Sabian that I've had for over 20 years. That used to be with me back in the Panda Bang Wangos in the Relics years, way back. And then a Juice Goose power supply, which has been with me since then, too. And that's just a power strip in a rack form. So that's kind of a tour of uh, both of my rooms here at West Wing Studios. As you can see, we've got some lights in here today. I'm going to do a little uh, video shooting. It should be fun. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that video. Be looking forward on Facebook. Rock on, everybody.